Hello everybody, this is HG Shaves here. I'm back from a video. Hope this finds you well and in good spirits. So, we have a bonus video this week, and that's because, uh, well, I'm very excited about Tobacco Tuesday. So, I participated in my first official Tobacco Tuesday last Tuesday. Thanks to all of you who joined in with me after I was like, hey, tomorrow's Tuesday, let's do this. And so it'll be interesting to see how many people stuck around and did it again this week. I have a feeling it's not going to be as many people, but that's okay. Um, I do love these, you know, um, alliteration theme Shave of the Days, Williams Wednesday, Tobacco Tuesday. Um, I, I, I think those are wonderful. And if anybody knows, by the way, did Tobacco Tuesday start on Badger and Blade or did it start on another kind of old school form? I don't know. Um, certainly feel free to let me know. And so the big, um, scuttlebutt with Tobacco as of late is how they reformulated the soap to not include tallow. So what I've learned from two American shaving vendors that I've spoken with actually in person in the case of uh, Maggard Razors and then also Mertz Apothecary, which is known, which is here in Chicago, known online as Small Flower. I talked to both of the kind of head people there and they said that only in Europe is the base changing. So because they're American vendors, they have still received, you know, the old tallow formulation and they anticipate that they will continue to receive it. So just as an FYI, for any of you who have been wondering about that, that's what I heard. So. No reason to go out and buy a bunch of backup tubs, um, especially if you're located here in the U.S. So this is a, um, you know, soap jar, ceramic. This thing is heavy. It's 4.4 ounces of soap, but when I put it on the scale just for fun, this whole thing weighs almost one pound. Of course, the puck is full, so as you use it, it'll lose some weight. But anyway, this is the old tallow version. I just bought it recently, um, maybe in the past month or so. And I have been using the shave stick, but now... Let's go ahead and use the um, original soap. Something that just came in yesterday is the EDC Eau de Cologne. This is basically just like a milder version of like a Eau de Toilette. And in this case, it's a splash. So you do splash this on. And um, I haven't used many EDCs in my time, but I'll be interested to let you know what I think of this. And then the exciting thing, let's see if we can do this. So this is a lather catcher. Um, I've gotten in a couple of these um, in my time, just because that's kind of what happens, but I've been putting off uh, using this one, and after uh, Gerard of the West Coast Shaving Daily Shave series, uh, he used one last night and did not have the best experience, and he was kind of talking to me uh, before and after his um, shave, and so I said, well, you know what, man, let me go ahead and use this razor that I've been waiting to use. So, first, let's start on the back. It says... Canfee Brothers, New York, USA, patent applied for. So a lot of these lather catchers will have a bunch of patent dates, like specific, uh, you know, years that, for example, could apply to the US patent date, but also the patent date maybe in Europe. This one doesn't. So you have to go to a source like Weights Compendium to, to figure out, okay, so what year approximately did they make the razors where it said patent applied for? Um, and if my research is correct, this is maybe like a 1918 razor. And the SCS could mean two things here on the front. Um, in some contexts, it could mean stole chrome steel, which was kind of another uh, razor. And in fact, they made the same razor where on the back it said stole chrome steel, and then everything about it was the same. But this one says Canfrey Brothers. But in this case, I believe it means star crew steel. Um, I was talking with Dave in Kentucky, who's a knowledgeable person about these kinds of razors, certainly more knowledgeable than I am. And he sent me um, a case example of this razor because I would like to get a case for it eventually. And if I can remember, I'll drop a picture in of it right here. And as you can see, it says Star Crew Steel, which would imply that that's what the SCS stands for. So like, what are the odds that there are two different kind of mini razor brands around the same time that have the SCS letters? I mean, that's kind of funny, right? But anyway, these were not meant originally to be used with the modern gen PTFE blades, of course, but you can make it happen. And so long as you have the two blade stops, which these are pretty uh, prominent uh, blade stops here, and so long as you have this little uh, brass lever up here, you're going to be good to go. So we're going to try it out. And if it doesn't work, I have a backup razor, um, ready to go as well. So how am I going to show you this? Well, that looks okay. So you're going to put the blade on there, make sure it's behind the stop, which 
Mm, the width is a little weird, but I think that works. And then let's flip the lever up. Maybe, do I go up? <laughs> yeah, there it is. That's it, right? Yeah, I keep thinking it goes over, but it actually just goes up just a little bit like that, the uh, lever. And so that feels pretty locked. Um, okay, let's hope, let's hope it stays that way. <laughs> uh, if you're ever, you know, um, if you're ever scared looking at these blades and then when you put them inside like a 1912 and the blade kind of disappears and you're like, oh, that's not so bad. Well, if you need to kind of uh, break your fear, I recommend using one of these because that's just the whole blade right there. Okay, let's get into this, shall we? Um, so for the brush today, we have to use kind of a uh, old man brush to go with the old man tobacco and this old razor. So we're going with the Zenith BO3-826 uh, in Europe here. The Gentle Shave calls it B2. This knot has just become awesome. Um, really broken in and just super soft. Like I was noticing the other day that this is actually softer than a couple of my synthetics even, which I think is just crazy. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna add a little water back and then let's load directly off of our tub here and we'll see how this goes. Seems like I've got the right amount of water in it based on the bubbles. I do like a little bit of kind of frothiness to come up. I don't want it to be too pasty. And let's load for, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds or something. Cause this is a pretty um, dense soap. It's got tallow and um, I don't know. Honestly, I forget what the other ingredients are, but it's, it's still a dense soap. And so you don't need a ton of it. Okay, let's go to there. That looks pretty good. Got a fair amount of soap on there. And then let me just gather the excess off the sides here. That's the only thing with these ceramic jar soaps like this one and um, maybe Mitchell's wool fat is that, um, you know, the jars can be a little more tedious to clean up compared to say a typical plastic uh, tub or something. Um, what was the thing I was gonna say? Oh, that's right. Um, another interesting difference that my friend SpongeBob pointed out to me, thank you SpongeBob if you're watching, was between the shave stick and the soap jar formula, they're not the same. Um, one notable difference that he pointed out was that the, the soap that I'm using right now has real oak moss in it, which is something it's like one of those, um, basically it is only allowed to be used in certain small concentrations because it can, you know, give people some kind of reaction to the fragrance. And so usually people use, um, synthetic oak moss for that reason. But he was pointing out that, um, at least at some point, maybe not this jar, but they, they were putting real oak moss in the soap versus not in the shave stick. So in theory, if your nose were super sensitive to, you know, real oak moss, then you might be able to notice um, the difference, right? I certainly wouldn't, but I guess the scent does seem slightly different. Um, it's a very strong scent, and I think that does turn some people off in the beginning because of just how potent it is. But um, people have told me too that over time, you know, months, years, it does fade a little bit. And so, um, you know, don't uh, be too afraid. It's super strong, brand new out of the factory. We're just dealing with one day growth here. We're in the middle of my, well, middle of most of our weeks. And so I do try to shave every day during the week. And then I take a day off um, before I do my usual Friday or Saturday video. And yeah. Let's go ahead and start with this. Why not? And we'll just clean up a little bit here. 
I haven't gotten quite good at, you know, perfectly clearing that part, but we'll get better at it, right? And let's warm the razor up. <laughs> this is, this is a uh, pretty wild here, but I don't know. It looks, it looks pretty good to me. Um, this is a pretty light razor, by the way. I forgot to mention that, like under 50 grams, certainly. It's got a hollow handle, maybe one that you could have attached with a stropping mechanism to strop your blades. And so we're going to try to hold this thing as flat as we can. So, oof, here we go. Huh. That's super mild. That's not what I was expecting. Wow. That's... Huh. You can hear it cutting, but it's not nearly as loud as I thought, or as aggressive. Um, the, you know, the thing with using, basically, you're gonna have two problems, potentially, when you try to use the modern blades with these old lathic catchers. One is the original blade design was just some kind of proprietary thing. So basically you would have to have like heavily modify this kind of blade to get it to work. But the other bigger problem, which is maybe what I'm experiencing right now, is that just the angle of the way it cuts, um, you know, again, this is not, um, like it's, it's, it's not only that the blade is different, like you're using a feather versus a, you know, wizard net or something, but it's also that the, the actual angle is different at which the, you know, blade is being held against the razor and then the angle at which it's cutting your hair. So far, not terrible though. Um, and then of course you have to see how the lather goes under there because that's really uh, what these are all about, right? You can feel the blade just a little bit. And so hopefully that helps you to, um, you know, guide you, right? I could try a heavier handle on this in the future. Although I have no idea what the threading is. Well, we escaped one pass and live to tell another day. Maybe just two passes is gonna be enough, despite the mild feeling. It might be okay, because I'm just doing one day's growth. Um, let's do maybe two and cleanups, uh, pickups. Let's see how that goes. So I'm just gonna rinse um, real quick. Really don't feel anything like negative so far, which is good. Um, the soap performance feels nice. And, uh, ooh, that was my stomach, sorry. <laughs> and yeah, I, I have really fallen to like this scent. Fallen to like this scent. I've fallen in love with the scent. That's probably the better way to say that, come on. Fallen in love with the scent. Um, it's just, uh, some would say it's kind of, uh, Stockholm, Stockholm syndrome kind of deal <laughs> to where I've been using it now. 
and now I've turned from being kind of lukewarm about it to like, I quite like this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so here we go. Let's do a second pass. It's hard to tell. Well, I guess that's the angle. I think. Hmm. Okay, pretty good. Um, I think this razor got little particles floating around. Seems like this razor might benefit from a little more skin stretching than usual. It's weird because the It's hard to say if that, if this little cone area is lower than usual, but it kind of feels like, anyway, that maybe this isn't like, you know, kind of stretching the skin as much as it normally would. So let's see if this does anything. Again, this is this is fun for me. I hope this is fun for you all to try out something new on camera for the first time. Um, because normally I would have used this for a week and then come back and give you my very uh, long-winded comments. But today, just trying it out for the first time. I think I'm going to do a third pass. Because it's just very mild. And I don't think it's the blade. Like being dull or anything because this is only the second use on this blade. Hmm. So decent shave at this point, but might as well just do a third, right? So let's do a third. We'll go mostly against the grain. And we'll see how that does for us. So I welcome people to um, share their Tobacco Tuesday Shave the Day in the comments. If you already did so today or in the future, if you find this, let me know what you used. Of course, you don't have to, but... I do feel like it's better if you use um, some kind of classic other products besides your tobacco. Um, and that's the funny thing is that tobacco actually isn't as old as I thought it was. Like I think they started it in the 50s. And so compared to, you know, this razor, uh, tobacco's like a spring chicken. <laughs> So, yeah, let me know what your shave of the day is, and um, I'll try to get back to you. Okay, here we go, third pass. It's very smooth. I mean, for a razor going against the grain like this, that's... Uh, hard, hard to beat that feeling, I mean, really. So what's going on for you all this week? For me, we're getting ready for um, kind of an end of 
uh, term things for my students. And so I'm working with them to get those sorted out. And I must say that those end of term things are usually, uh, usually more good than bad. You get to see how much your student has progressed and then they get to see and everybody wins, but it's always weird if they haven't, but that's pretty rare. Pretty rare for my students, of course, because mine are the best. They're not, but. This razor is tricky for me. This razor, this area. It's tricky for me with some razors. That's one of them. Looks like I got myself, but that's okay. Just a little spot. Um, pretty nice sound. Okay, so I've got that little weaker there. Let's feel around. Pretty good. Okay. Of course, if I were using this for y'all, you know, after a week of use, I'd hope that my technique were a little better. But this will just have to do for now. So. Just doing some little touch-ups in my usual spots. And I think we're good to go. So um, let me rinse off and then I'll actually do a cut for once and I'll bring you back in for post shave in just a second. So for a first time go with a razor that's over 100 years old, I give that, you know what, I'll even give it two thumbs up. I mean, really hard to complain about that. Um, so let's do some aftershave now. We're gonna start with the Tabac EDC, which again is just like alcohol, water, fragrance, some dyes. So I'm gonna use a bomb after this, but I, I anticipate I'm gonna get a pretty good burn here. The restrictor is pretty mild, which is maybe a good thing. And let's start with that much. This might totally kill me. Let's see. Yep. Yeah. Mmm. Man. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, the... I don't think that's fragrance. But there's something in this that, um... Like either the alcohol or... It's like I'm trying to smell the tobacco. And I don't know, maybe I've just got nose blind to it but I really can't, well, maybe in a minute. Um, anyway, it reminds me of the 4711 Splash and they're owned by the same company, um, Mauer and Verts. So I wonder if there's um, some kind of connection and in ingredients there, maybe. Um, I'm gonna use some Zingari Unscented to actually help my skin because I surely only just hurt my skin. <laughs> by what I did with that EDC. Woo, man, <laughs> that was uh, quite the burn, but that's okay. I expected that to happen and I had the balm ready because I figured out I might need it. Now the skin feels much better. And it's funny, maybe, Maybe this is just the different scent of tobacco, not in the soap. You know, the soap can give you one idea of it and then the liquid forms can give you another. Sorry for that truck. Um, so maybe this is just actually how it smells. It's much more light and kind of not as um, heavy. Interesting, so I'll have to think about that more. Um, anyway, thank you all for sticking it through this long video. I got very excited about this old razor. The Camphy Brothers uh, SCS uh, razor 
and let's just for fun let's take the blade out so you just pop that down the blade kind of pops up and then that's it well that's pretty easy um, and then we use tobacco of course and we use the zenith uh, bore so uh, share your tobacco tuesday share the day down below if you'd like and otherwise we'll see you again on saturday for our regularly scheduled programming all right so thank you all so much for watching this has been hg shaves take care and we'll see you again next time goodbye